Hello everyone, it's Abigail from The Creative Bix and today I want to show you how to paint your own watercolor pumpkin in the app Procreate. Okay, so it's going to be super easy, super fun, simple, um, and I hope you enjoy. So before we get started, let's just go over some of the things I'm using. I'm using my iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch. Um, it's the fifth generation. My stylus is the Apple Pencil second generation, um, and this one's pretty important. It's going to work best with the watercolor brushes that we'll be using today. Um, the app is Procreate, um, and this is my canvas size. And once again, um, the brushes I'll be using are my ultimate watercolor brushes, and um, that will be linked in the description below. And um, if you want to know where this grip is from or this iPad case, that's also going to be in the description. So let's get started. Okay, so on this new blank canvas, we are going to grab a cream color and we're just going to tap and drag that onto our first layer. And then above that layer, we are going to add our canvas texture. So I'm going to scroll all the way here to the top and I'm going to grab the bumpy water color paper texture. And what we're going to do is I'm going to be making use of these two boxes. So this is our primary box and that's going to be black and our secondary box. We're going to make sure that's pure white. So you can either drag that all the way to the corner in your classic slider or in the circle slider, you can double tap where that white area is and it'll go to the perfect white. Now, before you exit, um, you want to make sure that this circle up here is black. So you're just going to tap on that black box again, and then you can exit out. So remember we're on that new layer and we're just going to drag and I have my percentage here at about 50% um, and the smaller you make your brush the smaller the texture will be and the bigger obviously the bigger the texture will be. So let's go back to about 50% 51 and I'm just going to tap and draw all over the entire canvas in one swipe. And then we're going to tap on this end here and we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. And so with that, now you can see the texture on that cream color we had. And if you don't have that cream color and you just have this white um, background, you're not gonna see that texture at all. So once you turn on that cream um, or any sort of color that is not black or white, um, you will be able to see that texture. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add a layer between the overlay and the bottom um, color here. So everything is gonna be in between layers. So you can add a few layers right now. I'm just gonna stick to one. And first I'm just gonna sketch out my pumpkin layer and I will skip ahead and get to that. Okay, so I went ahead and just sketched out a pumpkin. Um, you can do it however you like. And this is just a rough sketch. We're gonna kind of follow it um, and just use it as an outline, but it does not have to be when we paint um, perfectly within the lines. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna rename this sketch layer to sketch so I don't get confused. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity. Let's do about 25, 27%. And then beneath the sketch layer, I'm gonna add a new layer. And we are gonna grab the watery ink brush from the same watercolor brush set. And with this, you wanna make sure you, um, you can use your pressure. So that's where the Apple Pencil um, pressure sensitivity settings come in handy. So when I press light, it's gonna be you know light opacity. And um, when I start to press harder, it'll get bigger in size and width and you'll see it's more opaque, but then it also shows how um, the edges are more colorful, um, um, more opaque than the center, right? So when you press harder with a watercolor brush in real life, right, the, um, the color and the water is pressed out to the edges. So this kind of mimics those real life watercolor brushes and paints. So what we're gonna do is on this new layer beneath the sketch layer, I'm just gonna kind of follow these crescent shapes and this oval shape here in the center. So they're basically one, two, three, four, five shapes. So we're just gonna kind of lightly draw on the outside and I make sure that my center right here is a little bit thicker and then these edges are a little bit tapered. So we're gonna do the same thing on the same layer and kind of follow that crescent shape. And I like it when they overlap here because it keeps that definition once we get rid of the sketch. So we'll just kind of follow that line and fill that in. And you wanna make sure you keep it all in one stroke or else if I kind of try to fill in the middle, it'll overlap like this right here. So we're gonna to try to keep each crescent shape in one stroke. And I'm gonna maybe go over it a little bit more so I have more definition there. And then last one.
and I didn't like that. So I have two finger tap to undo. I'm just gonna go over that one more time. There we go. Now we're gonna add a little bit of shading. So to do that, I am going to add a new layer and uh, we have selected this kind of rusty red brown shade. And if I just draw on top of the pumpkin as is, that's what it's gonna look like. And um, I don't really love the way that looks. So we are gonna change the blend mode. So I'm gonna change that to color burn i like the way that looks but i'm going to lower the opacity so it blends just a little bit better and it's at 51 percent now the one thing is if i um make this into a clipping mask because obviously i don't want this stray stroke right out there um if i change it to a clipping mask all of those pixels will be clipped to that pumpkin layer so you won't be able to see that outside stroke but it does change the integrity of the color and the way it blends so i'm going to actually turn off clipping mask and what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear this layer and go back down to the pumpkin layer so this is kind of a workaround to make sure that all my strokes stay within the shape of the pumpkin um, but without losing that integrity of color so going here to the selection tool i'm going to tap uh, make sure i have automatic here uh, selected and then I'm going to tap and drag. Now I don't want the whole um, screen to be blue so I'm going to drag to the left to lower my selection threshold to be 63.5 percent. So that means that my pumpkin layer uh, or at least this pumpkin um, shape is selected but nothing else outside of it will be selected. So when I go back up here to layer 5 and I start drawing you can see that there are diagonals right here and I will not be able to dra draw where these diagonals are. So when I draw here, I am not outside of my pumpkin shape, okay? So now we're gonna add some shading and to do that, I'm gonna draw along the sides here and along the bottoms and then just a little bit over the bottom half of the strokes that overlapped, okay? And just a little bit up the side there. And then you can also go back over and kind of add a little bit more of that red color to make it a little bit more vibrant on the bottom. And then we're gonna go over here to my smudge brush to make this um, flow a little bit better, um, smooth it out. And I'm gonna be using the Watery Blend Smudge Brush within the uh, Ultimate Watercolor Brush Set. And I have three smudge brushes, and actually quite a few of the watercolor brushes down below can also be used as smudge, but these, are, these three are specifically dedicated um, to smudging and blending out your watercolor designs. So with the Watery Blend, I have it at, let's say like 24, 25, percent and the opacity is at about 65 percent so it'll be nice and smooth and I'm just going to kind of blend out all those harsh edges right here okay and then don't forget to blend out the bottom here as well kind of pushing and with this you can tap and drag or you can kind of tap and smudge and that kind of pulls the watercolor with you depending on where you're going from. So I can pull it down or I can pull it up. I'm just gonna pull it up ever so slightly so we keep that saturated reddish tone in there. And I'm gonna pull that up there. And then you can also go back and if you wanna add a little bit more, I might wanna add a little bit more red there. Just kind of go back and forth and see where you would like to add your color and then go back into your uh, smudging blend and blend it out where you want it. So under our highlights, we're actually gonna add a new layer and same thing, we're gonna keep this normal for now. We're, we'll see if we wanna mess around with blend modes, but I'm gonna go back here and grab um, a kind of pale uh, yellowy orange shade So and see how that blends into the pumpkin. And I think that's gonna look okay. So I'm just gonna lightly go. So remember, if I press really hard, it's pretty stark and um, bold and bright and pretty high contrast. I'm just going to lightly add in my watercolor stroke and I'm still using my watery ink brush and then lightly follow that stroke um, of a rounded shape here. Just kind of go where I need it. And if it's a little bit bolder than you like, you can go back to finger double tap or single tap with two fingers and that'll get rid of your stroke and three finger tap to redo okay and then go back with our smudge brush and i'm just gonna blend out those edges
Okay, so the main part of our pumpkin is done, and we're going to move on to the stem and our little curly Q um, greenery. So I'm going to tap out of our selection, and I'm going to add a layer. I'm actually going to add it beneath the pumpkin for the stem. So for that, let's use this kind of darkish brown color, and I'm going to zoom in, and you're just going to kind of follow the stroke here. And I actually might turn, so for the pumpkin and everything, I had it at 17%. And I'm going to lower that to be, let's go 10% and see how that looks. Yeah, I like that better. And you can just do this as many times as you'd like. I'm going to make sure I have at least kind of some edges right there and then color that in. And then we're going to add a little bit of shading. So I just want to go over right where I already drew. So now I'm going to go with my smudge brush and just smudge that out. And that's pretty good. Then on top of that, I'm going to add another layer above that. And I'm just going to go in with that yellow brush that we had before. And I'm going to turn this size down really small. Let's go like, let's see what 4% looks like. Well, even smaller probably. Okay, now I have it at 2%. And I'm just going to lightly draw a little bit, um, just gently some uh, lines to give the the stem some texture right there okay and it doesn't need to be a lot a little bit goes a long way and then if you want we could see what it would look like if we hit screen and then lower that a little bit i don't want it to be too bright okay i'm gonna have it at screen at 87 percent and see what that looks like zoomed out i like that and then what you can also do is if you want to go back down here and kind of erase where it overlaps, we can go here on this layer. I'm going to use a soft airbrush and erase where that stem is. And that should be good. And you can find the soft airbrush in, I think, the airbrush section of Procreate that comes with the app. Um, and so we have our stem and our pumpkin. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add another layer and i think i'm going to have this let's just add it um above the highlight area of the stem and we'll see what it looks like so i'm just going to grab a green and let's see what this looks like um i like that size so i'm going to keep it on that um two percent size that we had and i'm just going to draw some curly cues and over here and see what that looks like when I zoom out. And let me get rid of my sketch layer. So I'm just going to tap that check mark to turn it off. And that looks pretty good. The last thing we're going to do is add some watercolor splatters just to make it feel a little bit more realistic, watercolory, if that's a word. Um, so to do that, we are going to add a layer above um, our pumpkin highlights. So above everything that we've drawn so far, um, but below the sketch layer, which is turned off. And to do that, I'm going to be using the tiny splatter brush and I have that set at 15%. So near, I'm going to try to keep it, um, the splatter color to kind of close to the object it's near. So if I have my green stems here, I'm going to kind of keep those green splatters right there. But then, you know, we might have a stray one down there. And so same thing with the orange and I might go a little bit deeper with the orange color since we have this shade here and what you can do is tap and hold and see if you find um, a nice orange color you'd like to um, select and see if that looks good so I like that orange and just put them I might go overboard with my splatters a little bit um, and then maybe we'll see if I if the brown looks good in this situation I might want it a little bit more saturated yeah we can put a few in there and it's not really too visible, but there we go. Okay, so that's basically it. There's only one thing. Um, I don't like the way the bottom of this part of the crescent of the pumpkin looks. So to, do, to change that, I'm going to tap this part of the pumpkin. And I'm actually going to grab um, swipe to the right once uh, with the pumpkin layer. So these three. And I'm going to go over here to my adjustment menu and tap liquify. And I have um, this setting on push. Um, and the size at 38% pressure all the way distortion and momentum are down and I'm gonna go in here and you can liquefy multiple layers which is nice so if I do this I'm gonna I can liquefy it that much but I don't want to do it that much I just want a little bit more rounded and let me see what that looks like yep, that looks good 
Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And now you have a watercolor pumpkin that you made all on the iPad, completely digital, but looks still pretty realistic, at least I think in my opinion. If you follow along, I would love to see your finished artwork. Um, you can tag me on Instagram at the Creative Fix and have fun creating. Thank you so much for watching. So if you enjoyed painting that watercolor pumpkin with me, I also have a tutorial on how to draw this 3D pumpkin in Procreate. It is perfect if you love fall, if you love autumn, and um, pumpkins in general, and it is a super easy, fun tutorial to follow. So if you want to check that out, I will link that video tutorial in the description below, and I can't wait to see you there!